The National Forest to me, I didn't know what it was. I had no clue, I just thought it was a forest in the middle of nowhere, really, and we used to go down there to drink. Growing up in Colville, a lot of children get into trouble because they're trying to find things to do with their time. I used to set benches on fire. I thought it was good to smash things as well as pulling the trees out. I wanted help, not for myself, for everyone else around us. That's why we did things that were antisocial, because we wanted to be listened to. We wanted to be heard. This photograph from, I think, January 1965, the whole area looks heavily industrialised. Lots of coal trucks and, and coal mines. The later photos show the area in desperate need of regeneration. This is the local coal mine still in use right up until, I think, 1989, and that's where the Conkers Discovery Centre is now. I remember the days when some of the local villages were covered in coal soot and mud was everywhere from the clay works, and we were surrounded uh, very closely by old spoil heaps and old, old clay workings. They've been transformed by all the tree planting. Eleven years ago, we were successful with the National Forest Tender Scheme. It was a huge decision. I know my father and uncle thought we were stark raving mad planting agricultural land with trees. We planted approximately two thirds of the farm. It took us all winter. I loved everyone I planted. We're in a nature area that we built. We put a pond in and we reared some pheasants in here and we feed the birds as well in here. But it has to be looked after quite often because trees grow quick. Because I was hanging around on the streets and causing trouble, the police brought me along to this group. It was a cold night, it was winter, and they said we want young people to be involved in looking after Snibston. And I thought, well, I don't want to do this. I went home. And I told my mum, and she says, well, you should be involved because you live pretty much at Snivston Country Park. And it took me a while to lose the attitude and not want to go out and get drunk and stuff. The page before I got involved with the National Forest didn't really care about anything. Hands on my heart, I'm very proud of what we've achieved here. We've created habitats for all sorts of waders, snipe. We've got such a mix of wildlife here some that we'd very, very seldom seen. I feel privileged, really, because I'm one of a few people that can say that they've, they've transformed the landscape. Behind me, you can see the Albion tip site. It's a, former, it's a former open cast mine that's being used as a landfill site. It demonstrates that the job is still a work in progress. The tip will take years to fill in, and when it is, it'll be greened up as part of the transformation of the forest and the transformation of the people's lives that live here. They're quite an angry bunch. You see a different person when they're in the forest to when you meet them on the street. They're just not angry when they're in there. They calm down so much. Maybe you might kick a tree or something, but you've just hurt yourself, really. It's too peaceful. I think I'm a more caring person since I got involved. It changed me as a whole. Instead of just changing what I think about the National Forest, it changed me so I care about everything as a whole. This is a working landscape. It's a modern version of an ancient idea. It's, it's the first time a forest of this type has been envisioned in a thousand years. What more could you wish for? A great greenwood growing in the heart of England. <laughs>